So, anyone need more blocks? Oh, those, are those are yours. And okay. I have a problem. I don't, I don't, have money. Oh, don't worry. We're going to do yoga. Don't worry about money. I think. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start in a child's pose. Let your knees go wide, your big toes touch. You do it after. That sounds nice. My kids don't sit. No, there's no dining. Child's pose. Activate your hands, spread your palms. Exhale all the breath out. Yeah, we need this big time. Life is busy, but if you don't take moments to just pause and take care of yourself, we are no good to anybody, seriously. So just be on your mat, breathe, feel, and let your body and your mind just have a release. Press up onto all fours, tabletop position, spread the palms wide. So when you're in tabletop, just bring the hands like an inch forward. Yeah, curl the toes into the mat. I find this a little bit more activating through the hamstrings. Broaden across the upper shoulders, plug the hands down and just find neutral with your neck, which is generally the front edge of the mat. Go ahead and thread your right arm underneath. So it's threading the needle. Your right ear is gonna come down. Your left arm can stretch towards the right palm or it can come around for like a little bind. You could wrap it around. Mm -hmm. And just breathe into the upper trap and shoulder blade. So your butt is up high. Unravel the arm up towards the sky. Bring it back down to the ground and pull yourself back up to a tabletop position. Other side, you got it. So just, it's called threading the needle. You're gonna thread your left arm through. So your ear just resting, the side of your tricep is down. The right hand can stay bent like that. It could slide so your palms touch one another, or you could take your top arm, you can wrap it around for a half bind or like, you know, in that direction. You don't feel like you're putting yourself in a position that's unsafe. You're just beginning to breathe. Unravel the hand, place it flat to the ground, press to a tabletop position again. Yeah. Curl the right toes into the mat, activate the right leg. So just doing like a half plank. So your right leg extends and the right toes curl into the mat. Sarah, move up a little. Good, and just breathe through your back right thigh and your hamstring. Pick a spot to focus on, plug the thumb, the index finger, the baby finger down, and then slide the left leg back to a plank position. This is a good way to get in. So now the left leg meets and you're in plank. And if it's too much, you just drop your knees underneath you. Look forward just a little bit, broaden across the upper shoulder blades, plug down. And just begin to feel, feel the length and the shape of your body, feel your breath as it moves freely through you. Engage the navel to the back of the spine, hug the sides of the thighs, the hips, the quadriceps, the outer knees and the ankles all towards the center line of your body as you maintain. Rock a little bit more weight forward towards me, if you're here with me, all the way onto your tippy toes, hold. Keep your arms straight, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Yeah, so going from plank to dog sometimes feels a little different. So set up a little, if you need to kind of creep around, maybe bend one leg, bend the other leg, it's called walking the dog. <laughs> Somebody really brilliant came up with that. Spread your toes wide. And notice if your heels are really far from the ground. If they are, that's okay. Bend a little behind the knees. Make it a little less aggressive. That's perfect, Laura. Plug down the thumb, the index finger, the baby finger. And then movement of your arms is away from your ears. Yes. So a lot of times what happens in the practice is we dump down. That looks good, Sarah. A little bend behind your knees. And then you're really going to get your hips high up off your shoulders which is where we wanna create that space. Lots of space from the tailbone to the crown of the head and from the tailbone to the backs of the heels. And then once again, roll forward to plank. So now you found your kind of sweet spot. May not feel so sweet. It's just a spot. Bend your elbows in half to a chaturanga. A little bit or a lot, your knees can drop. You can also just hold plank, draw your belly in. Restraight your arms to a plank position. Keep your arms straight, hips up and back dog. Your feet are about hips width distance. 
a little more, more uh, momentum. Roll forward to a plank. Bend your elbows in half to your version of a push up. It could be a little bit or it could be halfway. Re straighten your arms to a plank, hips up and back to a dog. Plank position like an ocean wave. Halfway to a chaturanga. Re straighten those arms to a plank, hips up and back downward facing. Good. Glide your right foot all the way forward into a low lunge and pause. Yeah, so big step with your right foot. And if you need to use your hands to get it up and over to the right, drop your back knee so it's on an angle just for a moment. Keep the toes curled into the mat. So back knee is on an angle, toes are curled, and the knee is resting on the floor. Yeah, so just bring the knee down for a second. Be on your fingertips, breathe your chest through. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your arms like this, like a little pillow. So one form on top of the other, you can grab onto the elbows, whatever you want to do. And just rest your forehead on those forearms for a moment and come up just a little bit. So your belly draws in and you're kind of hovering over your right thigh. Yeah. Good. Now keep your arms the way they are, like a little headrest. Activate your back left leg and lift the kneecap up. But you're staying in this kind of hovering position. Make a connection with your forearms towards your forehead. Your belly draws in, your legs anchor you. Now. You're gonna keep the legs super engaged and start to lift your torso up. And then the hands are gonna slide, the arms are gonna slide back a little. So maybe they come up a little higher and kind of come to the top of your head. And if you need to loosen it up a little, you loosen it up a little. So it's a, it's a gentle shoulder opener. If you can kind of hug around your elbows and bring your elbows straight towards the sky without your head kind of dipping forward or back. So finding neutral, like a picture frame, that's where we're going. So rather than just yanking ourselves into the position, we got in with control. Spread your right toes wide across the mat and then get a little heavier in your front right thigh. Activate your back left leg. And then from your elbows to your fingertips, straighten your arms straight up. And if this feels crunchy, widen the position, that's cool. You can even cactus the arms. Anything works, breathe. Hands come down to frame your front foot step to a plank. Pause and plank. Decide if you want a push up or if you're just looking for a little less. Halfway down is where you go. Straighten your arms to a plank. Hips up and back dog. Glide your left foot all the way forward and through. Take a big step and just pause for a second because you kind of have to shove the foot up there a little. Yeah. Like literally shove the foot. Drop the back knee. We don't take enough time like in, the, in our course of our yoga practice and our lives post-workout to just do this. This is so good. Yeah, just be here for a second and notice how your mind starts to race. Yeah, at least mine does, always. I'm always on to the next thing. That's where Jake gets it from. I'm like, who's the first person leaving the field? Oh, it's my son. Oh, who's the first person leaving the building? Oh, it's my son. He wants to get the heck out. Yeah, he can't help it. Use the elbows and come and set, set yourself up here. So your belly has to lift just a little bit up off the thigh and grab onto opposite of what you just did. So forehead, if it feels familiar, just switch it. So make a little pillow for your forehead to rest on your forearms. Good. Now activate your back right leg and come up so you're in this low lunge and you're hovering with your head resting on your forearms. Rip the hips in strong, activate the back leg, get heavy in the front thigh, and then start to lift the torso up. And as you start to lift the torso, slide those clasped hands to the top of your head. Maybe you can get a tighter, tighter grip and grab over the elbows. Maybe it needs to be looser. Good, your hip points move forward. You drive the left thigh down, maybe spread the toes wide. Lift the hip points up and the waist up. There you go. Broaden across the collarbone and the chest. And then from your elbows to your fingertips, you straighten your arms. You decide if this is crunchy or you need a little wider or even cactus, whatever, anything feels good in your body. That looks good, Dara. Hands come down to frame your front foot. Step to a plank. Bend your elbows to a position that works, to a chaturanga, that looks good, Lauren. Drag yourself through an up dog, first one. 
rather than jamming the neck back, press through the hands and broaden across the collarbone. You're gonna get a lot less pressure in your lower back. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Calming breath out. Look where you wanna go, step, step to the top for this one, just step. Feet can have a little separation if you prefer. Long spine or hands can just rest on your shins, you pick. Exhale, fold over your legs. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer at heart, drop your arms. So feet a little separated, they kind of drift together, at least mine do. And take some sun A's. Arms reach up, look up. Dive over, bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Come to the fingertips to prepare you. You can step, you can float, however the practice feels like it's most accepting for your body. Plank to a chaturanga is where we're going. Upward facing dog drags you through. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Good. Keep your arms straight. Look where you want to go. You can step, you can float to the top. It's up to you. Long spine, weight stays forward into the balls of your feet. Exhale, fold over yourself. Root to rise, come up. Anchor, hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. So just make like a clean connection, arms reach up, dive over, bend knees forward, fold, let the head go. Come to the fingertips to prepare you, step or float to a vinyasa. So chaturanga to an up dog, you can also skip either of those. Hips up and back, downward facing. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Press down, plug down, look where you want to go. Step or float to the top, get their light. Long spine, exhale, fold into yourself. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer at heart. Sometimes this is the hardest part of the practice for me, like arriving. Yeah, reach up, stretch up. Dive in half, over bent knees, forward fold. Let your weight travel forward. Long spine to prepare you. Step or float. If you're just stepping, I like to alternate the feet. Yeah, chaturanga, upward facing slides you through. Hips up and back, downward facing. Look to the top, keep your arms straight. You can step, you can float. Arrive safe, you can roll long spine. Weight is forward, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer at heart. Drop your arms, arms reach up. Dive again over bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Come to the fingertips, prepare, step or float through your vinyasa. So I'm just alternating back. Yeah, chaturanga, halfway. I know, upward facing. Hips up and back, downward facing. Roll forward to plank. Take your right knee towards your right and towards your navel. Just straight in. Just go straight in today. So the trick here is, is the arms are straight up and down. You want to plug down, activate your left leg, and scoop out your belly. So hold here. Just lower the right shin so it hovers. Yeah. So it hovers the floor. And then draw it up. Scoop it up. There you go. One more time like that. Lower the right shin so it just hovers the mat. Arms are straight. Scoop it up and then step your right foot all the way forward and through. Be on your fingertips for just a moment. Yeah, turn your back foot on a strong angle. So you're setting your feet up for warrior one, but we're not going yet. The toes are almost completely turned forward. You got it, Laura. Turn your toes, your back left toes, more towards me. Yep, and you may need to take your right foot to the right. So the same thing goes here. So walk your right foot lower into the right more. And then that's going to give you the space to have your back foot more in an angle. Arms are going to come up again. And you're going to make a little pillow for your forehead. So you start with your forearms literally on your forehead. So in the front of your forehead. So you pause. And what I want you to focus on doing is using the outer blade of your back foot to press down. You got it. So you can get this foot more in an angle. There you go, there you go. Now press down. You're still hovering, guys. 
scoop it up the right side of your hip, hugging it in and activating your back leg. Yeah, another breath. So press down strong through your legs. Don't lose the shape. Start to come up. And as you come up, your hands will automatically need to slide back. And then there's a broadening of your chest. Grip your right hip in strong. You may need to loosen this up a little. If you can keep it tight, it's gonna be a little bit more of a shoulder opener. Take the left ribs and spin them forward towards the front skinny edge of the mat. There you go. Press strong through your feet. Then from your elbows to your fingertips, straighten your arms. Aha, uh -huh. we got good alignment. Hands come down, plank position. Stay in plank or take a chaturanga push up and hold. Mine's gonna be little. Yeah, that's good, Maria. Restraighten your arms to a plank. Left knee in, scoop out the belly and drag the shin towards the center line. Point your toes. Keep plugging down, arms are straight. Hover the left shin an inch from the ground and just pause. So it's almost like it's gonna rest. Scoop it up and draw it in closer to you. One more time, hover the shin an inch from the floor. Scoop it up and hug it in. Land your left foot all the way forward and through in a low lunge, pause. Get your feet set. So what I automatically do to set up for warrior one is walk the left foot to the left a little. Be on your fingertips and then go ahead and turn your back foot strong. Yes, it's on a strong angle. This is great. Then come up and clasp opposite elbows or opposite forearms if you need a tighter grip and let your forehead rest on the forearm. So you're hovering and holding. It's almost like you're gonna launch to a warrior three, but you're not. Make a connection, pause here, get heavy in the left thigh, grip the hip and strong and keep rotating the right thigh forward. So the outer blade of your right foot press is firm. Draw the side of your body up and then start to slowly come up. Now, as you come up, the elbows can come up straight over the top of the head. You can grab kind of the instep of the elbow the, to the, the palm, that's great. If it needs to be looser, that's fine. Bring your chin just a little forward, Laura, and then take your right ribs and turn them forward. Breathe. Kind of bring your lungs forward, your chest forward. From your elbows to your fingertips, straighten your arms. Get heavier in your legs as you sit down into warrior one. Hands to the floor, plank. Chaturanga, upward facing slides you through. Hips up and back, downward facing. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Look where you wanna go, step or float your feet to the top. Long spine, weight is forward. Exhale, fold in half. Sit into a chair pose, weight moves into your heels. It's cause it's different movement. It's different movement. Chair. If you wanna amp things up here, you could do what we just did. Grab opposite elbows and chair. You're like, I'll pass. Good, press up to stand up from your elbows to your fingertips, your arms immediately straighten, drag your chair to your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Here we go, chair pose, sit deep. Dive over bent knees forward, fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips, prepare you, step or float through your vinyasa. So you can also just go to a down dog and be in down dog. You can just go to an up dog and that feels good. Hips up and back down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. So secure the feet first and then come up. Makes all the difference. Very good. Hands come down to the floor to a plank or your variation that feels good for you. So 100 push-ups doesn't feel good for everybody. From your down dog, the left foot lands, the back foot turns, warrior one. Secure your feet first and then come up. Back down we go, plank to a chaturanga, to an upward facing, legs are strong, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. 
take a full breath out. <laughs> Look where you want to go, step or float to the top. You see all sorts of stuff here. Long spine. These were dressed, fold over the legs. Could be worse. Sit deep into chair. So if you were here before and you grabbed opposite elbow one more time today, grab the opposite of what you did. So it's just even. Let your weight move into your heels. Shoot up to stand up and from your elbows to your fingertips, you straighten your arms, drag it to prayer at heart, drop your arms. So from the top, here we go, chair pose, sit deep. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Sweatshirts are coming off, long spine to prepare, step or float through your vinyasa. Upward facing is smooth, so you don't jam into your low back. Downward facing, hips press back. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. Back down we go to a plank, through a vinyasa, or right to a dog. You just hold for a moment. Left foot lands, back foot turns. You want to feel secure as you come up. Not topsy-turvy. Yeah. Hands come back down. Through vinyasa. Upward facing, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, full breath out. Good. Look where you want to go, step or float to the top, get there light. Long spine weight is forward, exhale, fold into yourself. Sit again into chair. Yeah, I personally like with the feet a little separated. I just feel like I could get into the chair and it feels better in the low back. Just make sure you look forward rather than looking down. Yeah, feel the weight in your legs and then press all the way up to a standing position. Use that energy and then drag your hands to prayer. So one more, here we go. Arms reach up, sit again into your strong version of chair. So much easier from the top. Dive over your bent legs, forward fold. Long spine sets you up, step or float through your vinyasa. Upward facing, smooth operation. Hips up and back, downward facing. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. So take your time getting your body into the pose. That's right for you. Hands come back down to a plank. Feel what you're doing as you lower to your chaturanga. Upward facing, point your toes. Hips up and back, downward facing. Take your time, the left foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. No one's moving at exactly the same pace. It's just impossible. Back down you go to your version of plank, to a push up, to an upward facing dog, to a downward facing dog. Good, so you're gonna walk your hands back to your feet at the back of the mat. So just start to walk your hands back to your feet at the back of the mat. Good, and when you get there, come to the fingertips, long spine, bring your hands to your hips and pull yourself up. So just come up to stand at the back of your mat. I personally like to separate my feet, hips with distance. I just find it a little bit more grounding. Good, draw your right leg up, grab below the right kneecap and keep your left hand on your hip. Just start here. There's a strong flex of your right foot. So for a lot of us, we get here, we're like, all right, not, not much feels like it's happening. A lot of us feel like a lot is happening. Everyone's gonna be in a different spot. If you'd like to grab your big toe, you're welcome to do so. This is not for everybody. You can slide your right leg forward. Once again, not for everybody. You can slide your left arm up. You can do it with a bent knee and the arm up. This has been the spot I've been at for a little while now. But when you kick your right leg forward, you're not kicking from your low back. Yeah, that's the thing. The hip points move forward. The side body and the waist grow you up. The left arm extends up. So now what's gonna happen is with the leg out forward or bent, the right leg is gonna go out to the right only a little bit. Oh, that's it, stop, right there. And then the left arm can drop down and the palm can face up. So the knee could just be open on an angle, just like this. Perfect. 
the palm faces up. So you're receiving that energy of the left arm up like you're kind of in a half warrior two. Stay here. Grip your right hip in strong. Ground the standing left thigh and the left foot. Focus on your breath. I don't make a breath. Anyway, no. Yeah. Yeah. No breakfast here. He had his oatmeal, we're good. Bend your right leg up into tree pose so that you're gonna use your hand and then once you get your balance, maybe the arms can grow straight up towards the sky. Grip the hips in strong. Maybe look up a little with your eyes. Yeah. Anticipate falling out. Anytime you go to a balancing pose, it's just what happens. Hands to prayer, step down, feet hips width, just stand. So that could have worked out great. It could have been terrible. It doesn't matter. Stand on your right leg, grab the left chin, the left, uh, left knee, and just start here. Hand on your hip. There's an evolution, right? A little bit or a lot. Hook the big toe. If you're moving on, extend the leg forward. You could try everything and then you could always backtrack. Slide the right arm up. Flex your left foot. Remember, you're not kicking from your low back. So your, your standing leg is strong and straight, but the left leg can have as much bend behind it as you need. The growth happens from the right side of the body. So contract the right quadricep and reach up more. Start to open out the leg on an angle. So for me, I went right back to that bent leg. But when you open on an angle, the hip is not opening all the way. It's just a little bit. The leg is straight out. Have it straight out, but have the right side of the body long and then drop the right arm open with the palm up. If you fall, come back, quiet your mind. Hug the hips in, that's it. Keep the right arm reaching out to the side. Slowly bend the left leg up into tree. So use your hand to do it. Capture the shapes that works for you and then bring your left arm out to the side and then sweep both arms up when you're ready. Tree pose, grip the hips in strong, lift from your waist, let your eyes fix on one spot. Breathe your energy up. There we go. Hands to prayer. Step down. Feet hips width distance. So with you, being at the back of your mat, bring your hands to your hips and just fold. Now ground your feet. Bring your hands flat and walk yourself out into a dog, focusing on the back side of your body without your legs lifting all the way up, you're in a downward facing. From your downward facing dog, land your right foot smack in between your hands, turn your back foot on a strong angle, cartwheel open to a warrior two. Your back toes are pivoted in enough, your right thigh is directly over your right knee. Your chest is nice and open just as it was in that tree pose, yes. Use as much of your left arm as your right arm. Get heavy in the front right thigh. You got it. Just a few breaths today. Pick up your right toes, guys, and press to the padded part of your right foot, and then re-spread the toes. And then when you re-spread the toes, roll from the inner part of your right thigh to the outside of the baby toe. So yes, there you go. And then anchor, anchor your left leg. Good, breathe your torso and your chest nice and open. Flip your right palm, reverse your warrior. So you're in a reverse warrior. It's a subtle side body opening, not too much of a back bend. Actively reach your right arm up and back. Get heavy in your front right thigh. Good, stay here. Start to straighten out your right leg. You're in a reverse triangle pose. Don't go pin straight. Keep a little softness behind your right knee. That's great. Turn your right hand, to, reach for your right hand to your right shin triangle pose. Left arm extends up. Anchor through your legs, the inner and outer thighs. If you need a block, the block will go to the outside of the right calf here. You decide. So place it to the outside of the calf, Laura. Yeah, it sets the shoulder up. Feel like you're pulling up on the front of the shin or the pants and pulling them up. Yeah, I'm like moving the skin. You want to feel the side of your body, your obliques, kind of opening big here.
Rip the outer hips in strong and then fix your eyes. A few more breaths. If you're looking up, doesn't feel great for the neck. Just find neutral or look down. Look to the floor, circle the hands down. The left heel pops up off the ground. The left palm goes flat. We're gonna roll to Vashi stock in the side plank on the left side. You can modify with the bottom knee down, tenting the fingertips. I'll show the modification. The right leg can stay strong and straight or it can float up hip height. You also can stagger the two feet. Yes, yeah, so take your top foot lower in front of your other foot. Yep, right there. And then anchor it, press down. And that's gonna keep the hips aligned. Plank position. When you get to your plank, pause. Chaturanga, do it slow. Up dog slides you through. Hips up and back, downward facing. From your down dog, land your left foot forward. Turn your back foot strong. Cartwheel open, warrior two. Warrior two. So it's a pretty big step in your warrior two. Yeah. Turn the back toes on an angle because it's going to get the thigh in the right rotation. And make sure the left knee always tracks over the ankle so your stance is big enough. Breathe your chest open, turn your thumbs up towards the sky and palms face towards the screen. Yeah. Pick up your left toes, spread them wide and then roll from the inner thigh open. See if you can get a little bit more openness through the hip and then replant the foot down. And just a few breaths, hold in the space. Turn your right toes more and more towards the door. Yeah, it's gonna help that hip, there you go. It's amazing what you start to fight in the pose, the obstacles that you create in this posture. It's just an obstacle, it's not really anything. It's just your body and your mind. Keep the shape of the legs, flip the left palm, reverse your warrior. Let your hand just slide naturally down the back of the thigh, but stay heavy in the front leg. Keep reaching arm up and back, arm is straight. Straighten the left leg, but not pin straight. You're in a reverse triangle. Pivot the left hand to the left shin. You created all that space, and then the right arm reaches up. I like doing it that way because it really opens up the side and the low back. Yes, yeah, move your block lower back like two inches. It's directly underneath your shoulder. Now you're set perfect. Stack the two arms and then look up with your eyes. Yeah, grip your outer hips in strong. And then breathe. And the moments that we hold, that's when the magic continues to happen. Sometimes it doesn't feel like anything's happening, but a lot is happening. Empower from your breath. Look to the floor, circle the hands down, the right heel pops up. Right hand goes flat. You find yourself into your Vashistasana on the other side. So stagger the feet, stack the two feet, set up here so it feels adequate for you. That's perfect. You can even have a tented hand, Sarah. I like that because it gets you out of the shoulder. Nice, beautiful. Be on the outer blade, blade of your feet. There you go, Laura, that's it. That's the spot to be right there. Nice work, everyone. Lift from your bottom hip, your top hip will automatically lift a little higher. Plank position, do it slow. Chaturanga if you feel like it, upward facing. That's what it comes down to. Hips up and back, down dog. Keep it moving ladies, right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior two. Warrior two. Yeah, take a second, arrange it so it feels right for you. Flip the palm, reverse. Right hand on the inside of the right foot. I like a block. Yeah, I place it kind of in that medium setting, that low setting. You can go high with it. Go on the inside of the foot and use the back of your right tricep to press against the inside of your right leg. Left arm spreads up. Rip your right hip in strong. Yeah, turn from your bottom right ribs towards the sky, look up. Now your left arm is going to reach straight up towards the sky or it's going to slide to your hip. Your left hand comes to your hip 
and then wrap it around and see if you can grab for a half bind. So when you get the half bind, even if it's a half half bind, it's just a little bit, turn your bottom ribs, look over your left shoulder, look up. Grip your right hip in, get a little heavy in your standing right leg and anchor your left leg. These look great. Breathe your collarbone and your chest open. Stay with it. Notice if you start to quench your body parts, keep hugging your right hip underneath you. Keep turning your bottom ribs. Spread your left arm up. Anchor your legs. Warrior two, take the bounce out. Ooh, it never gets old. Look forward with your eyes. Circle your hands to frame your front foot. Plank position. Yeah. In your plank, drop to your forearms for a forearm plank. Lean on your left forearm for a forearm side plank. You can turn your arm on an angle if having the arm straight forward doesn't work for you. So yes, forearm side plank. You can drop your bottom knee. You got it. Lift the, the bottom hip up. Stagger your feet, Sarah. It's going to be easier. Perfect. Nice, lift from your bottom hip, look up. Now, if you want more, the top arm that's up, reach it forward towards me. It's gonna really oblique, uh, work the obliques, but turn from your baby finger down. There you go. Forearm plank, do it slow. No crash and burn here, forearm plank. Do it slow, do it slow, do it slow. You can come out of it, Laura. From your forearm plank, right palm, left palm, plank position. Do it slow. Chaturanga if you feel like it. Upward facing dog. If you survive that, you want the up dog. Hips up and back down dog. From your down dog, land your left foot forward, smack in between, turn your back foot on an angle. Take a moment or two, come up, warrior two. I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna be. Warrior two, here we go. Take a second, wrap your inner thigh open, anchor your right leg, stack your upper body, flip the palm, reverse your warrior. This creates the space and then begin to tip forward and bring your hand to the instep of the foot. Definitely use a block. Yeah. Place it on a direction that works and then caddy the back of your arm to the inside of your leg so you create that openness. openness. Right arm reaches straight up. You kind of lean back a little. Grip the left hip under you, turn the bottom ribs. And then if you wanna add any variation with the right arm, the hand can just start on the hip because this is getting the shoulder blade to come back. And then maybe it starts to slide to the lower back. Maybe it can wrap. Each side's a little different, right? But keep turning those ribs. There's a lift up. There's a lift up and a twist back, yep. Take the left tricep, Maria, and get it to touch the inside of your left leg. There you go. Now grip the left hip underneath you, strong, strong, strong. And then turn the bottom ribs and open your collarbone. Look over your right shoulder. The, hand, the arm can always rest on the thigh too, if it's too much. Get a little heavier in your legs and connect to your breath, last little. Unravel your right arm straight up. Anchor through your legs without any bounce. Warrior two. Look forward, circle to the floor to a plank. Do it slow, pause. Breathe your chest through your body and plank. Then when you get to this plank, drop one forearm at a time to a forearm plank. So you're not wavering the hips too much. Then lean onto the right arm, Vravashi Stasana side plank on your forearm. The right forearm can be straight forward. It can go on an angle. You can drop your bottom knee, you can stagger your feet. Top arm breathes straight up towards the sky. If you're looking for a little more, the arm can wrap up and forward. The baby finger will turn. Nice work. Look down with your eyes, slow movement, forearm plank, pause. From your forearm plank, one hand at a time to a plank position, do it slow. Lower halfway chaturanga. Pull yourself through an up dog, point your toes. 
hips up and back, downward facing. Keep it moving. Right foot lands, back foot turns, warrior two. Circle up and good. Reverse your warrior. Come through your warrior two. Reach out with your right hand and float into a half moon. So just kind of like it's one of these sequences where you're just growing. You're growing each thing. Half moon. Grip your right hip in. The biggest thing in half moon, the hardest part is to keep your right foot forward. You can start with your hand on your hip, your left hand on your hip. Keep your right hand down. There you go. Yeah. Some days you rock this. Some days it's just your mind and your body. Take your bottom ribs, turn them open, then extend your left arm up. Breathe your chest open. Again, maybe get lighter with your bottom hand. Flex your left toe strong. You fall out, you try again. Grip the right hip underneath you. Look to the floor, square the hips, bring your left hand down. Land your left foot next to your right. They can be a little separated for today's practice. Sit into chair. Slide the hands to a prayer at heart. Hook the elbow twist to the right. So even with the knees separated, just really work on the alignment that the two knees stay tracking in the same line of energy. So sometimes it's not even hooking all the way. You got an air twist. Weight stays in your heels. So bring your left hip towards the back towards the woods. There you go. And then get in there. And you may even want to open up your arms. If you feel like that takes you out, then you backtrack and you just do a little. Keep sitting, getting heavier in your legs as you twist a little deeper, a little bit more dynamite here. Get out of your head. Just breathe. If you open your arms, bring them back to a prayer. Strong in your legs, chair pose. No angry thoughts. Float your right foot an inch from the ground. Press up to stand and wrap your right thigh around your left thigh for eagle. Wrap your right arm underneath your left. If you can't get your foot to wrap today, that's okay. The trick in this pose is to get heavy in your left leg like it's sitting into a chair. Steer your hips back. If wrapping your arms doesn't feel like a happy place, you can give yourself a bear hug. You can have your hands in a prayer. Get heavy in your legs as you sit deep. Weight is in the standing heel. Squeeze down the center line of your body. Release, go right to the other side. Yeah, just wrap right into the other side. It's just better to do right and left all at once. Sometimes I think so. Sometimes I don't know. Bend your right leg, bend it and then wrap the thigh around. It's okay, there you go. Lift your elbows up, hands can be in prayer. Squeeze the arms, squeeze the legs. It really doesn't matter which arm is wrapped, yes. But sit like you're in a chair, perfect. Release, arms reach straight up towards the sky. Dive over, bent knees forward, fold, let the head go. Come to the fingertips, prepare, step or float through your vinyasa, keep it moving. Up dog pulls you through, hips up and back, downward facing. From your dog, left foot lands, back foot turns, warrior two. So now you're kind of just moving your body and your breath. You feel a lot more open, hopefully. Wrap your left thigh, Maria, open. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Get heavy in your front thigh. Come back to warrior two. And then from here, bring your hand to your hip and you can kind of launch into half moon. The block's a little to the left. Yeah. Flex your right toes strong. Your hand can stay on your hip. Bring the block just a tad more forward and you're gonna be in good shape. Yeah. Top arm straight up. Contract the left thigh and grip it in strong. Yeah. 
lift from your inner right thigh, flex your right foot, Laura, flex it, flex it, and then turn your bottom ribs, like open up towards the movie projector. Yeah, there you go. Couple more. Look down with your eyes, you were waiting. Square off the hips, bring both hands down, land your feet together or a little separated, sit again into chair. Slide the hands to a prayer at heart, inhale that breath, hook the elbow. You can air twist or you can get in there and twist. Knees, feet, thighs all lined up. So the right knee does not slide past the left. That's the hardest part here. Then you get in there, weight stays in your heels. Yeah, you can have the feet a little separated. And the knees can be a little separated. They don't need to be together. Open up the arms if you did on the other side and you want to give it a whirl. Stay with it. Chair pose. So as you press the stand, float the left foot up now. So it's gonna look like this. Yeah, because we did the right to start. Yep, so just floating the left leg up. You've got a bent left leg, your arms are extended straight up towards the sky. Hands can also just come to a prayer, however you have better balance. You're gonna float through a warrior three right here. So the left leg just feeds back. It's always good to have blocks because sometimes you come to this position and you're like, I don't feel like I can support myself. So you use blocks, you kind of iron it out. Soften behind your right knee, the chest is a little higher than the upper, uh, the lower half of the body. Gaze down, left hand down, right hand to the flat part of your back, pause here. This is where I've been stopping because I, I feel like I'm, this is as far as like my body can go. Turn the upper ribs, look to the right. Keep the lift of your back thigh. And then if you can, your right arm extends straight open. We've done a whole bunch of shoulder opening here. So it may go better than you plan. And if it doesn't, just have the hand on the flat part of your back. Turn your palm, Laura, down. You, your, your, your left hand is down and your right hand is on your sacrum, which is the flat part of your back. And then lift from your inner left thigh. Keep the spine long. Look towards the movie projector. There you go. And twist open. Look down, right hand comes to the floor. Take a giant step back into a lunge. Get your legs set. Come on up, crescent lunge. Stay with me, guys. Just a little bit more work. Hands to prayer. Inhale the breath. Hook the elbow. Lean out and twist. So a few options here. You can drop your back knee. Yeah, sometimes it just feels better to do a little less in this pose. Sometimes hooking the elbow to the outside of the thigh doesn't feel great. So you can actually just chant the fingertips on the inside and take an easy twist. The arrangement of the legs is the same. That looks really good. Grip your right hip, activate your back leg, and then bring more weight forward. There you go, because your back leg is set up like a plank. And then lean back a little bit so the crown of the head is in line with your back heel, even if the knee is down. So keep leaning back. There you go. Three more. That's fine, Laura. Breathe your chest towards me. Look forward, there you go. Look down, place both hands to frame your front foot, pause. I know, step your left foot forward. Long spine, weight is forward. Exhale, fold. Last time today, chair pose. Float your right leg up and float up with the right leg bent in half. Just pause here. So you're standing on your left leg. Hands can come to prayer if you think your balance is better. Hands can even be on your hips. Float back to a warrior three. Keep a soft bend behind the left leg. Make sure your hip points are squared down. Hands can be in prayer. The arms can be forward. That's gonna be the most intense. Lift your chest and your shoulder blades up a little higher though. And from your right thigh, make sure it's pivoted down. Flex the foot more. There you go. Then let the eyes come down, right hand to the block. Place the block at a, I have mine at the highest setting. You want a block, Maria? Here. 
Yeah, I think so. Even on a low setting, I think it's going to be good like that. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, even higher. Perfect. Good. Do you want to lift from your inner thigh? Slide your left hand to the flat part of your back. Place it here. There you go. And then turn open here. You're going to go towards the, the pool now. There's no perfect yoga pose, guys. You just work the best that your body's going to let you move today. Spine long, back leg strong, twist open. Maybe stack the two arms. You may surprise yourself. Stay with it. Look down, both hands come to the floor. Giant step back. Take a second to make sure your stance is okay. Come on up, crescent lunge. You're ready for this. Hands to prayer, inhale the breath. Lean out, hook the elbow and twist. If you get here and you need to drop your knee, you drop your knee. Bigger step, Lore, longer in positioning. There you go. So the heels lifted really high and the back leg is engaged. And if you need to drop the knee on this side, you do it. Crown of the head lines up with the back heel and you twist open. Three more breaths, stay with it, get out of your head. Lean back a little, there you go. Look down, plank. Chaturanga, upward facing. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Land your right leg forward, half pigeon. Yeah, right into a half pigeon, I know you need it. It was like sneaky hip opening, yeah. that class, yes. It's great. Half pigeon, fold. Yeah, so like you started, your arms were like in this little pillow. See if you create that little pillow again for your forehead to rest on. Hands directly down, listen carefully. Curl the left toes into the mat, okay? So activate your back left knee so it lifts up off the ground. Arms go straight. Your core is gonna automatically engage. So you're gonna float your right leg up into this half pigeon so it's hovering from the mat. Yep. So it's hovering. It's hovering. So very slowly, keep the arms straight. Slide your right leg back so it's straight and it hovers, point your right toe. Stay here or bend your elbows in half for a one leg push up. Re straighten your arms to a one legged plank. Lower the right foot down, hips up and back dog. Slide the left knee forward, half pigeon. Set yourself up and then fold. Yeah. If you need a block underneath your left butt cheek, slide it there. There you go. Perfect. It's getting better though. Yeah, create a little pillow for your head to rest. Let your body, your mind fall into it a little bit more.
hands directly to the mat, arms will go straight, right curls to uh, right toes curl. So just do this much first, activate so your right knee lifts. So you're automatically engaging your core muscles, arms are straight. Now start to float the left shin, but keep it at the angle of the half pigeon. Keep the leg at the, yeah, there you go, at the half pigeon. Keep the arm straight, keep scooping out your belly and look forward with your eyes. Slide your left leg back to a three-legged plank. Stay here or lower halfway to a three-legged push-up. Restraighten your arms to a three-legged plank, lower the left foot down, pause. Good, just get heavy in your legs, keep your arms straight, uncurl your toes and pull your chest through for an up dog. Yes, there you go. And then from here, hips up and back down dog. From this down dog, hop your feet all the way through onto your backs and lay down. Yeah, when you hit the floor, move with the block if you know you need it for bridge. We're doing two back bends. Yeah, the firm one is better. Lay all the way down, bend your legs in half. So always check, fingertips line up with the backs of the heels, then lift the tailbone. This could be your spot to stop. The palms can go flat, they can robot. I'm showing robot arms. Slide a block underneath low back if you feel that you're gonna get more today. When you lift up, so bend your elbows, Laura, so they're like this, right by your side body. There you go, good. Now your block can probably be higher to turn it. Yeah. You don't want to feel like your back's going to spasm. Rest your hips down. That's it. That's the pose. That's the pose. Sometimes it's not about going so deep. If you know you got a deeper back bend, now would be the time to go for it. You flip your palms, bring your chin to your chest, and you'll lift all the way up. If your deeper back bend is just staying with your lower back on the block, and lifting your legs up, that's the spot to stay for today. Maybe it's grabbing the front of the ankles. Turn your feet forward. You got it, Laura, and you're getting there. Nice there. So the breath comes in play here. You breathe from the tailbone to the backs of your knees as you lift a little higher than any variation of your back bend. Yeah, you may feel that you can go for it. Nice work that your shoulders aren't gonna let you go. That's okay. So stay right where you are. There's no reason to go. Exhale, your breath start to come out. When you lower down, remove the block out from underneath you. You don't force your body into a position. Some of us are just not designed. Happy baby, grab the outer blades of your feet. Some bodies just aren't meant to be in certain poses, but there's other poses that you excel in. Yeah, you excel. You excel in kindness. You excel in kindness, which is a pretty awesome pose. Yeah, which is a pretty awesome pose. Keep your neck nice and neutral. Hug your knees to your chest. Okay, so take your block the long direction and place it in between your thighs. Yeah, and then lift your hips to the left an inch and drop your knees together to the right and keep the block in between your thighs. Use your right hand on the outer left thigh and your left arm kind of cactuses. So just a basic supine twist. Come through center, keep the block, just scoot your, your hips to the right and then drop your legs to the left. I like this because it helps you to keep the knees together, which is gonna get you into the, the lower back and kind of evenly moving. Come up to center, remove the block. Yeah. And stretch your legs completely forward and your arms and your palms face open. You're setting up for Shavasana. You're like looking for another pose. There's no more. This is the most advanced pose I know. Make yourself comfortable, lay down. Lay down. Yeah. Complete rest. Yep.
Take a big breath in. Exhale out. Move slowly in your body. Arms can reach up over the top of the head. You can reach for your toes. Hug your knees around your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And then rock yourself up to sit. And sit up nice and tall. And if you can, try and keep your eyes closed. And if you can't, that's okay. You didn't fail. Sit up really tall and just feel today's practice in your body, your mind, your breath. Kind of just how you carry yourself in the seat. Let the hands drift to a prayer. Bow your head. Have closure. Have gratitude. Be happy. Lift your head. Open your eyes. Namaste. As always, fantastic. Our Zoomers were awesome over there. Thanks.